Hello, hello. Welcome back. We're talking about our inner teacher today and the fact, the truth, that there are no differences. The end. Thanks for joining me. I'm just kidding. Actually, it is that simple, but because we introduce myriad complications into our daily lives, all of them completely unnecessary, we'll say some more. This is illustrative, isn't it? Because we just can't take simplicity as an answer. We can't take it for what it is true. We have to analyze and think about it, and we overanalyze, and then we get scared and parse things out and categorize and subcategorize and divide them, and pretty soon we're confused as hell. Dazed, confused, stressed, worried, anxious, freaked out all over fabrications of our own mind. When you allow yourself to really think about that, it's powerful. What our inner teacher is teaching us is showing us to do is to undo our belief in differences. There are no differences. Your brother is you. You are your brother. There is only perfect oneness. How could it be any other way? This is something, of course, that we need to grow attenuated to because we resist the idea that there is only perfect oneness. God is. Only God is. We resist this idea because we're so used to having everything complicated and we're so used to doubt and this incisive mental scalpel that we have that slices and dices things apart. And our cultures, wherever you live in the world, reward us for this with prestige and social status and fancy cars and money and titles and all of this made up stuff. And it's all made up. The ego does not want you to believe that. It would make all of this real. So when we identify as individuals, we make all of this real to ourselves. And so it appears to be our reality. And I stress appears to be because it's not. And deep down, we know that it's not. But we wouldn't be interested in spiritual practice at all. We would not be interested in spirituality because we'd not pay attention to the call that goes out to all of us at all times. Why does it go out to all of us? It's from your inner teacher, part of your own mind. This is worth stressing. Your inner teacher is inner. See the last video for more on that. Your inner teacher is part of your mind. This part of your mind is the voice for God. It speaks for God. It speaks truly and leads you back. You can see this rightly as a communication link between God and your mind. Link. Perfect oneness. There is one mind, the mind of God, which you have not left. Ideas leave not their source. Thoughts remain in the mind of the thinker. Yes. Let's be glad that's so. Because when we're thinking about spirituality as a path, as a progression, as a journey or a walk, a, a yeah, a walk or a sprint or a marathon or whatever, however you conceive of it, 
when we think of it as traversing a distance, it's not really traversing a distance at all, is it? Because we've never left our source. However, where we have this belief in physical distance, in space, time, individuality, these analogies are, are very, very helpful. So our inner teacher, the Holy Spirit, uses these analogies for teaching purposes so that we may discern we may develop what is called in some Buddhist traditions, discriminating awareness. It's discernment so that we may know the difference between what helps and what holds us back, between truth and illusion, in other words. So we're developing that under the guidance of our inner teacher here on what we call the path. Now, we have in the world many abilities when we see ourselves as individuals cut off from other individuals, self-sustaining survival units. We seem to have multiple different abilities. Some of us are good at math. Others of us are really excellent at working with their hands. We, we may be in construction or we may be craftsmen. Some of us are excellent cooks. Some of us are not. Some of us are, are good at languages. Some of us are not, right? We all seem to have different abilities. And each one of us has many different abilities. And they seem here in the world rather disparate at times, don't they? They seem like they're completely unrelated to each other. So enter the teaching of the Holy Spirit. Enter our inner teacher. By the way, you may call your inner teacher whatever you wish. Even the Holy Spirit in this course goes by many names. The communication link, right? The comforter, the answer, the universal inspiration, friend with a capital F, the voice for God. Call your inner teacher whatever you want. It's your inner teacher. That's who's speaking to you right now, your inner teacher. That's why you're watching this video. It's why you're answering the call, and you are answering it, so thank you. We have all of these abilities that seem like they're separate. Our inner teacher has one goal, a unified goal. So what we're invited to do is give all of these abilities over to our inner teacher, who has one goal. Ultimately, we have one goal, one thing, and one thing only, the peace of God. We're invited to want the peace of God and only the peace of God. Actually, nothing else exists. We seek but what belongs to us in truth. We seek to be where we always have been. And here in the world, it looks like going home. So if that is a useful image to you, take it and run with it. Our inner teacher has one goal. When we give our inner teacher all of our abilities, and in fact, all of our experience, they're all channelized by this one goal so that they become unified. Here in the world, we seem to have many goals. We want to make X number of dollars this month so we can save for this vacation or pay the rent and the light bill, right? whatever that goal is. We seem to have different goals. We have goals for our personal health. If we're at work, the, the team has goals. Your business has goals. Societies have goals. There appear to be many goals. Give them all over to your inner teacher who has one goal. All of the efforts are then channelized toward the peace of God. They're unified. All of these Seemingly disparate and individual goals become unified. We're stressing the unity of them. They're one. 
They all contribute to the one goal. So they're not different at all. We begin to, in our mind, emphasize unity instead of separation. This is how we're being taught. So we're invited to do this. Give over your entire experience to your inner teacher. Now, if this sounds scary, like why would I give the Holy Spirit my entire experience? What does that even mean? Why would I ever do that? Well, this is how we awaken. And what you're interested in is the peace of God. We all are. You don't have to actually acknowledge that. In fact, you can deny it all you want. You can turn this off and say, yeah, no, you're full of it. Whatever. I mean, so what, right? So what if you do? Understand that's the ego that's trying to preserve itself and have you cling to the old way of doing things, which you seek to get away from, or you wouldn't be watching. So we see how we get in our own way here, don't we? And we really do. We really do. We say we want one thing, but we do another. So we're invited to bring these into accord and do what you say you want. Extend the peace of God to your brother. Forgive the Son of God and give all of your experience over to your inner teacher. That is setting the ego aside because think about what you're saying there. You're saying all of the things that I have tried to orchestrate and manipulate, yes, manipulate in this world have blown up in my face. I may have had some temporary success or some hot, sexy dates, or I may have had a period of time where I was more happy than not. That happiness is either total or it's not at all. So we're recognizing that we've done nothing but obstruct ourselves. We've done nothing but get in our own way. So we invite our inner teacher to run the show. Another way of saying this in popular culture is Jesus, take the wheel. Yes, you drive. I'm going to move over to the passenger seat and let you run the show, please, please. Because I've only wrecked the car multiple times. I haven't paid attention and have run out of gas. Right? This is setting the ego aside. The ego is the voice that tells you that you have to run the show yourself without anyone else's aid, of course, because they're separate from you and they're out to get you. That's what the ego thinks. It thinks we're all in competition with each other for what we deem to be scarce, limited resources. In fact, there are no limitations. The Son of God is not limited in any way, shape, form. There is no form. Ooh, yeah. How can you be limited? This thing that you see in the mirror is not you. And if you're hearing this for the first time, you'll hear it again. <laughs> Stick around. So we're invited to give our entire experience over to our inner teacher. Let him, let her, let it, let them run the show. Pronoun does not make any difference. Your inner teacher is not a human being. That's part of your mind. So let your inner teacher run the show. We're invited to do this. We accept this unified goal, the peace of God. We're invited to want this and only this. That's why it is one of the lessons here in the workbook for students. Our inner teacher uses all of our abilities, all of our myriad talents and abilities only for healing. We use them to try to look cool, don't we? We use them to draw separations and further separations. We think of ourselves as superior because we can do this, because we're so cool and someone else sucks, right? We, we draw these kinds of distinctions at all times. Our inner teacher no, recognizes that those distinctions don't exist at all. So why are we paying attention to them? Let's divert our attention to what really matters, the peace of God. And our inner teacher reminds us time and again of this. 
That's all. Uh, the more we listen to our inner teacher, the more on the path, in a manner of speaking, we appear to be. And you may notice, as you start to do this, that things that used to bug the hell out of you, that really used to bother you, don't affect you the same way. This is a sure sign of what we call progress. Notice them and keep going. This is one of the things that happens on the spiritual path. There could be people or events or situations that used to anger you or annoy you, and with time and forgiveness and practice and a diligent effort on your part, you come to realize one day that they don't bug you anymore. That, eh, it's nothing. It is nothing. And to have this realization is a very powerful and positive experience on the path. So have those realizations, truly. Yeah, it's good. It's one of the ways that we notice that this works. It's one of the ways we prove to ourselves that these ideas are true. Want proof? Prove it to yourself. I'm not going to prove it to you. Prove it to yourself. That's how we do it. This course is learned by our practical application of its ideas. To understand all of this material intellectually is fine. It's one thing, but much more powerful and much more important than that is doing it. Practical experience. All spiritual traditions are about practical experience. Some emphasize this more than others, but ultimately that's what it's about. It's about practical application in the present moment. Because you can't practically apply something in the past or the future because they don't exist. They're not here. So now, of course, is the time when we do it. Now is the time to give your entire experience over to your inner teacher for his guidance. That's what we do. It's what you're invited to do right now. Understand, as we wrap up here, that the ego seeks to divide and separate. The Holy Spirit seeks to unify and heal, knowing that we're one. One with each other, one with God. There's no separation of any kind. Who are we? Yeah, of course. Who else? You know this. We all know this deep down. And however we get the call of our inner teacher to awaken, right? however we seem to hear that, whether it's an intuitive hit or a deep inner knowing or something that actually happens to us in our physical life experience. However, our inner teacher gets our attention. We're on what we call the spiritual path because we just know who we are and we want to get back home, so to speak. And as we do this, we begin to understand that we've never left. And what we're doing is we're waking up from a dream, a dream of separation, which is only a dream because there is no separation of any kind. This course is about changing our mind. It's about changing our perception under the guidance of our inner teacher. And the power of true perception, the goal of this course, is so strong that it brings our mind into accord with God. God takes the final step, so to speak, himself. We go beyond perception. True perception is easily translated into what we call knowledge. This is enlightenment, guys. This is what we're talking about here, and this is what it is. It's first learning to perceive truly, because we have to do that. See things as they are. That's the goal of this course. From there, True perception is so powerful and so unified that it is in accord with the mind of God, into which our mind is then absorbed 
recognizing that it's never gone anywhere. Another way of saying this is we're at home. The peace of God. That's what you're invited to want, and only that. So, you might ask what we do with all of these other worldly goals and ambitions and projects that we may be working on, and practical day-to-day -day things, like paying the rent or mortgage, turning on the lights and keeping them on, having water and food and stuff, being able to pay for these things, being able to continue to live life here in the world while we appear to be here. All of those things, while they may be illusions, our inner teacher, the Holy Spirit, can use them constructively and beneficially for all. Give them all over to your inner teacher. I invite you to do this. Give your relationships over to your inner teacher. Give your job or career over to your inner teacher. Give your inner teacher all of your possessions. Let that part of your mind that speaks truly for God direct your use of all of these. And trust, learn to relax, relax, and trust that you'll get everything you appear to need as long as you appear to need it. Your inner teacher, who is love, is not going to leave you dead broke. Your inner teacher is not going to call you necessarily to drop everything that you own and move off to Nepal or Tibet and meditate. Now, if you are, in fact, called to do that, then do that. But this is all about giving our entire experience over to our inner teacher so that he may teach us that there are no differences. We undergo our work of forgiveness here under the guidance of our inner teacher, and we do as our inner teacher directs us. So we invite this relationship. It's not a relationship with an external power. There are no external powers. Let's do the verbal math. There are no external powers. No one is outside of you. There is no separation of any kind. Ideas leave not their source. You are the thought of God. Where are you? Who are you? What are you? We're the son of God. The extension of God. God created us as an extension of himself. So let's take time, if that's what's required, to allow the beauty and the simplicity and the truth of all of this to sink in. And while you're at it, give your entire experience over to your inner teacher and let him run the show. Take the wheel. Yeah, yeah. Take the wheel. Because we've only managed to wreck the car. Give all of your abilities over to your inner teacher and let him direct them. Let him drive the car safely. So you arrive safely at your destination instead of winding up in the ditch. That's a useful visual, isn't it? All right. So I thank you, as always, for joining me. But more than that, more than the likes and the comments and the subscriptions, I really appreciate your dedication and commitment to your spiritual practice, to awakening, to healing the mind. Yes, 
That is the best offering that you could ever make anywhere, anytime to anyone is your dedication and commitment to spiritual practice. There is nothing that comes close to that in terms of offering something. So thank you very much for that and for your continued work on this, on forgiving the Son of God. All right. The subscription button is right here, and I'd love to have you. That's the red arrow on your screen. Go ahead and click on that and subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet. What we've got here is an international community, and we have a number of videos each week. We're going through the text of A Course in Miracles, and we will just keep going. Because repetition is what we need as adult learners. So if you have comments or questions, please feel welcome to leave them here. And I thank you very much for joining me.